All right, top billing. I think your boy Angry Murph is back. So click off of this right now if you don't like profanity or vulgarity because you know how I get down and it will never change. So got the alert that your man, the reigning national championship quarterback from the University of Georgia, Stetson Bennett, the QB that 99.9% .9 of that Georgia fan base did not want, is returning for another season. And I swear, you can hear it all the way out here in the DMV. A collective moan. And people are like, oh, man, Cletus. <laughs> and people are like, oh, damn, Leroy. <laughs> I got to get the Leroy's in here pretty soon, too. All these people out here are pissed off that their national championship quarterback is returning for another season. And I got to see a little bit of that right in that group chat that I was telling y'all guys about before that I had with these University of Georgia fans. And, and I had cats wondering about what about what does that do for the future of the quarterbacks there, the younger quarterbacks? What about their development? And I'm thinking to myself, Georgia was losing in the fourth quarter to a sophomore quarterback named Bryce Young. Had he won the national championship, he would be back for a neck for another season too, right? So where would the development be for the guys behind him? And would anybody have cared? He's going to leave after this next season. Same thing with Stetson Bennett. Why is it a big deal for Stetson Bennett to come back one more season? And he has a national championship to his credit. And you have to think, he can only get better. He can only get better. He has a great rapport with, the, with those young guys that he was playing with. So they're going to have more experience together. And people still aren't going to look at it that way. They want this man gone. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of want him gone too. <laughs> because I'm tired of hearing people talk about it. <laughs> Georgia's fan base mad annoying when it comes to quarterbacks. Look. Right after the national championship, I was still getting people coming to this content talking about how bad Stetson Bennett is, even though he killed the playoffs. People were still talking about Justin Fields. How, Sway? Justin Fields? What? They're still on that. I would have thought the Stetson Bennett thing, right? And I'm going to get to this right here. I did the drive about the... They just salting away the game on the ground. I was saving that because people forget they were behind and they came out throwing and took the lead with Stetson Bennett. They did not run one time. He came and put the team on his back with his arm and people aren't going to remember that. So I'll wake that ass up right now. But I wanted to talk about why are people still going to talk about Justin Fields? People are always in love with shiny five star names and all this and that. People are still talking about Jacob Eason. People did not like Jake from right. But look, they were in the overtime with this cat against Alabama, right? He went to overtime with him. They could have won that particular game as well. They had a chance to win that. Stetson Bennett gets by Alabama. Guess who played Alabama this time last season? Justin Fields at Ohio State with a remarkably loaded team, a team to me more talented than Georgia if we're talking about the offensive side of the ball as far as targets to throw to. Uh, they got nothing but first-round picks on that. And what did he do? Look at this right here. This is not the knock on Justin Fields. This is just the reality of it. He went to Ohio State. He did not go to Kennesaw State, right? He did not go to Morgan State. He went to Ohio State, a team that, in my opinion, the last couple of years, if there's not a more talented team than Georgia, Alabama, it'll have to be Ohio State. Look at the first round of the draft. These guys are putting guys in the draft for second and third picks on defense and all kinds of dope-ass wide receivers and offensive linemen. Ohio State's been that team, right? Did he win a national championship there with an easier path going through the Big Ten, not having to see Alabama until the playoffs? He did not win a national championship there. It's not that easy to win a national championship. It takes a total team effort, like I was trying to say when I said that man was nice. And I did the thing about him versus JT Daniels, and I said, I, I don't see a difference. I don't think JT Daniels is better than Stetson Bennett. I think he's more hyped than Stetson Bennett, but what he brought to the table to me – didn't supersede what Stetson could bring to the table um, from a different standpoint.
right? The mobility and all that. And I thought Stetson could push the ball down the field when necessary, and he proved that, right? So, but look at this, Justin Fields. 17 out of 33, 194 yards, one touchdown, and a lot of that came late. They was getting that ass smoked. 52 to 24, they managed to put up 24 points. Uh, your man was throwing to who? He was throwing to Chris Olave, first-round draft pick. Garrett Wilson, first-round draft pick. Jackson Smith and Jigba, albeit a true freshman, it doesn't matter. That cat's talented. He's going to be a first-round draft pick. Jeremy Rucker, one of the more talented tight ends there, be an early-round draft pick. Jamison Williams, we just saw him right at Alabama, a first-round draft pick. What? He's throwing a four first-round draft picks. More talent than Georgia, and they didn't win the national championship, man. You guys got to stop with this slurping the five-star quarterback stuff. Y'all should be proud that Stetson Bennett is coming back. He should be, right? He should be good in the hood, if you know what I mean, with the chicks. Everybody should be setting that man up with the chicks, you know what I'm saying? He going to lose that virginity this year. I can, I, can, I can see it. It's coming. He coming. You know what I'm saying, you know I'm saying there? So, that's all I'm saying, man. Be proud of this cat if you're a Georgia fan. Y'all should be happy he's coming back and not worried about guys of the future. But it is what it is. But, man, let me wake that ass up with this. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Remember, it was 18-13, to 13, 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, first and 10 here. And, look, they're coming out with the tendency breakers. Of course, you have the 12 personnel. You got a reduced split out here uh, by George Pickens. What you're going to have is a – pretty much a curl out combination from opposite sides. You're going to run slide protection here with the offensive line sliding this way, almost like a split zone or just having split flow action with Brock Bowers come in here. So you're running with that max protection, but it's just a two man route combination. Going to have pickings here pretty much on a curl or stop. And then you're going to have that out route by Jermaine Burton going against the cornerback here, and he's able to read leverage. Remember that hillbilly that was on this thing that said he can't read defenses? That man can't read defenses, but he's in the national championship game playing college football at a school that you're rooting for. Where were you playing at? Yeah. You guys got to stop disrespecting these guys like that, man. Check this out right here, though. Back to the basket play action fake. He saw the leverage. Bang. Got him. This makes this right here. If we come back, you also get, I forgot to add that you'll get a, a late flat route here by Zamir White. But they're running with that back to the basket play action fake. You got to understand the coverage right now. So it's looking like it's quarters coverage. So if you know this man's going to have this deep fourth of the field here and he's working with what seems to be outside leverage for some odd reason and you're running an outside route, but he's working with the spacing, that's exactly where you go with this, and he knew that right away, and he put it on. That's a long throw, too, and he hit him right there in between the numbers, right? But y'all mad he's coming back. <laughs> mad he's coming back to your team that he helped win the national championship after 88 years. Love this sequence of plays. Still working with the two tight set here. You got Darnell Washington and John Fitzpatrick right here. Going to have a Stutter and go right here, right? Stutter go on the outside with Jermaine Burton, and they completely sell this man perfectly. And my man had to pull the ripcord to stop this from happening. Uh, backside, I believe you have A.D. Mitchell here on a deep curl, but you're going to get that play action rollout, which is always dangerous, of course, when you have a team like Alabama with all that speed on it. But, hey, man, they came out and they were putting the onus on this kid getting it done with his arm on this drive right here, and it worked out perfect. Look at that. Oh, my man. <laughs> you see it right there? My man had to pull that ripcord, but let's go back to the brass tacks of it right here. Show and go there. Great job with the slide protection this way as well. They bought the entire flow right here, so he's got a clean pocket right there. So one-on-one -on -one with the great one, and my man right here. Had to pull the rib cord. Look at that. He tackled him too. That's a great job pulling the rib cord, right? <laughs> right. He had to just do by all by any means necessary. He had to get that man on the ground. That would have been a touchdown right there, which probably worked out a little bit in Georgia's favor as well. Um, being able to get a little bit more time off the clock there when they took this leap. So putting it right on this man's shoulder. Live in the moment, man. That's what you gotta do. Stay in the moment. Don't be worried about what's down. 
the line there, worrying about the guys behind him. Nobody will worry about that if it was Bryce Young. He had won a national championship and was coming back for his junior season. You know it will be one more and done. Same thing with Stetson Bennett. You worry about that afterwards. Who's to say what happens this year anyway? But I don't know, man. I think this kid should have a little bit more respect than that. All right, here's a late ad right here that popped up when I was doing this particular content right here by a real dog fan, right? All us real dog fans want to Stetson Bennett gone and JT to start next year, Cletus. Hell, we wanted him this year. Shaking my head. So that's one, the one about JT Daniels going into the portal from a few days ago. And this man is not garnering the type of respect that he deserves or people think or people think that he is. Now, I know these are probably the vocal minority or whatever like that, but I don't give a damn. This is what I see. People come in hundreds and thousands of people coming to this channel, disrespecting this cat. And he won a national championship. So back at it right here. Uh, they may have went to the well a little bit too many times. I may have got a little cute with this one right here. This time you have 13 personnel, right? Bowers, Fitzpatrick, and Darnell Washington in the game. So you're releasing them. You know it's going to happen a little bit slower, and you're still having that back-to-the-basket play-action fake. But you get a little bit of a breach here uh, when you try to pull the guard and act like it's play-action with Byron Young coming, screaming on the edge here, and Schaefer's unable to get there. And then Dallas Turner here is – coming on the arc going against Fitzpatrick and he just beats his ass. So look at this. Boom. Right there. Before he can even get to his drop step, nobody open. It didn't matter anyway because he's just on his drop step right now. He's really nowhere to go with this. He could try to climb back up into the pocket, but boom. <laughs> even with that being said, Dallas Turner coming on the rebound there and he gets a sack. So now all hell has broken loose, right? Second down or whatever like that. Second and 26. <laughs> Not quite second and 26, but you get my point on this. Second and 26, and look what this man does. You have the inside linebacker here mugged up in the A-gap. Cedric Van Pran actually lets him loose, so he's coming, right? Coming, creeping on the come up right there. Stetson Bennett. Staring down the gun barrel does not matter right here. Great block, obviously, by James Cook, like I explained after the game there. And he's able to subtly slide out here and launch this bad boy absolutely perfect with a nine route to A.D. Mitchell, right? Very much reminiscent of that second and 26 that I talked about there before. Look at him subtly slide, right? He didn't panic. He didn't panic. He's got that mobility factor. He's able to look downfield, right? Slightly hold the safety there. And then just get it out there. Look at that. Launching that bad boy. A.D. Mitchell does a good job here at the end. Separating it. Oh, dagger to the heart. All with this man's arm and brain. But he can't read defenses. And uh, they wanted J.T. Daniels to start and this and that. J.T.'s never had a bad game. J.T. never even played any good teams, really, right? A couple of good teams in Clemson and Cincinnati. Uh, last season, but this season, just the Clemson game, they didn't score an offensive touchdown with the man, but all the excuses come out. But if it were Stetson Bennett, no excuses would be made, and they would just say that he flat out sucks. So I don't know. Hopefully he gets the respect he deserves, but I might have to take a step back from that man because that's some annoying shit anyway, and then go through another season with it. But Georgia fans should be happy. He could bridge the gap, right? If they lost all these players on defense, and they have a ton. I was, that's what the content I was about to do before this happened right there, just to wake that ass up on some of the guys who will be coming up on defense for Georgia. And then I, I just saw they lost Jermaine Burton, of course, but the guys that they had, they'll be fine on offense. But you have your guy with all that experience who can come back and get better and can help out the young guys, right, whomever sticks around there. It should be worth his weight in gold, but hey, man, which fan base are we talking about? It is what it is, all right? But it's your boy, the DMV King, Mr. DMV, the Underground King, your boy Murph here. Uh, salute to everybody out there uh, with that quality support. I appreciate that for sure, but uh, we shall see how it happens, man. But hey, it was fun to watch with Stetson Bennett proving all the haters wrong. I live to prove the haters wrong, so uh, big salute to that guy out there proving them haters wrong, man, and there she blows, all right? With that being said, peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.